So I'm always willing to engage and most often I'll engage someone uh, that has a different opinion. If you think I'm wrong about something, then that's usually the comment that I'll, I'll talk to or about more than those. Hey, Corey, I appreciate what you did. You know, I may, I may give a little heart uh, behind that. Have you heard the guy uh, named Fuego Savvy? Fuego Savvy. I actually did. I actually did. As a matter of fact, let's put, let me, let me show you guys something. Let me put this on the screen. If you type in Corey Miner, now these are folks that have had conversation or statements about me. Doggone it. Hold on one second. Let me move this over. Well, I'm not going to worry about it. I'll, my head will just be in the way. Uh, but if you, let's see, where is it at? Where's the one that the guy said? There it is. There it is. Smart Christian Channel Exposed. Corey Miner is te <laughs> And he's got the little horns on my head. And I'm teaching a damnable heresy because I believe that if you don't have works that you're going to hell, that you're not saved. I put in the comments, I, I don't teach that. A few moments later. Yeah, so first off, I just want to say that it's no disrespect against you personally. Mm -hmm. The video I made, I've actually been a fan of you for a while. And I just, I, it's about the gospel. That's the real thing. Okay. Because when people start tampering with the gospel, in my opinion, it's a heaven or hell issue. So I, I understand your point of view that you say works don't have anything to do with salvation. But I mean, uh, that they do play a role in salvation, but the truth is that they play no role in salvation at all. Well, I, I, I don't say they play a role in salvation. They, they Well, OK, they don't play a role in becoming saved. Do you believe do you believe that after a person is saved that the Lord wants them to do any sort of works? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. OK, that's the point now. If a person the says they though, play, if a person said they place their faith in Christ, do you know anyone that's mm -hmm. ever said they place their faith in Christ and you're not and, and, and maybe you kind of got the feeling that they, they really didn't? Do you think that there are people out there that are actual false converts? Oh yeah, all all the time. But the okay. worst false converts are the people who hear the false gospel. The people but, but who no, hear but, the but wait a second though. Repent of your sins. Aren't there people out there that hear the true gospel? And still are false converts? Yes, there is. Oh, yes, okay. There is. Now, are because, there also like, people out there that are true converts, but aren't sure they are? They're doubting their salvation. Are there those out there too? There is, yeah. Okay. Is. What would you tell any one of those two to, to how they could know for sure that they are saved? What would you what would you say? I would say Jesus Christ promised us certain things and he cannot lie. John 6, 47, verily, verily, I say unto you, mm -hmm. he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. Everlasting is eternal. So Correct. if you believe in Jesus, you have eternal life. I There's, get that. I get that, brother. I, listen, I, I, that part I get. As a matter of fact, I preach that. I preach that. So much so that I've memorized what, what it says in the Greek. But here's the point, though. What if a person isn't sure that they believe they're listen, I can't I can't tell you how many times someone says, I'm not I think I believe, but I'm not sure. How do I know if I'm really saved? How do I know if I really believe? They know that believing, but how do they know that they really believe? So what would you say to them? I would say everybody knows within themselves what they believe. If you believe Jesus is the Son of God, you you know it in your heart what you believe you either believe or you don't it's it's like a, a black and white thing it's you either believe it or you don't believe it and it's it has okay. nothing to do with how they live you're, you're, how they you're, live is works you're saying you're saying from your standpoint that they know if they believe or they don't they're saying they don't know so you so you cannot tell them well, that they know there are some folks that do doubt otherwise or ask or here's a question when Paul said that every man should examine himself, what did he mean? Mm -hmm. He said, well, that was at, like taken out of context by a lot of false teachers. Okay. He was saying, uh, like they were doubting his apostleship, and he was saying, examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Know ye not that Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates? Like he was saying, 
the proof that I'm an apostle is that you have Christ in you. Well, that's a different thing. But no, 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 no. Paul it. said, hold on. Paul says the proof, one of the proofs that Paul used to show that he's apostle was his works. Right? Yeah. He, he used oh. miracles at, at the start of the church. To so he literally, he literally brings up his works. Now, again, we're not saying yeah. that works made him an apostle and works didn't make him saved. We, mm -hmm. we get that point. But there are people who literally are confused about whether they are saved or not they but yeah. is it possible yes. for and a person to know to know for a fact that jesus died on the cross for them and to know that they sin that they're a sinner and they needed what jesus did is it possible for someone to know those three things and still be unsaved is it possible for them to know those things and, yeah and still not be saved yeah that they, they know Jesus is the son of God, that he died on the cross, and yep. that he resurrected. Is that, is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah, it is possible. Because okay. If, now, they, so, if they don't believe if they don't believe in him. Well, hold on, hold on, because that, that, that's where we're going. So these people literally believe that Jesus did die on the cross. They believe that they needed him to die on the cross. They believe that he's the son of God. For a sec. Cut I'm sorry. Out for a sec. What do you say? Uh, you just cut out for a sec. What do you say? I'm sorry. I said these people literally believe that Jesus is the Son of God. They believe he died on the cross for their sins. They believe they needed someone to die on the, on the cross for their sins to pay their debt. They believe that, but they're not true believers. Is, that, is it possible for that to happen? You, you, so you're saying yes. So what does it mean so, to believe? What I'm, what I'm saying is that um, I'm not saying that if they believe that Jesus died for their sins, then they would be unsaved. What I'm saying is that there's certain Satanists and devil worshipers who literally know the facts of the gospel, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He died on the cross. He rose again. They know that, but they're not saved because they don't believe in Jesus. They don't believe in Jesus. And I wanted to go back to something we were talking about before. Okay. Um, people, people doubting their salvation. Mm -hmm. So... Out of all the people that I've talked to who have doubted their salvation, it's a very, very small minority of them who think that they might not believe in Jesus and that that's why they might not be saved. But the vast majority of people who I've talked to who doubt their salvation doubt their salvation because they think they're not good enough, that their me, lifestyle isn't good enough. Let me ask you a question. Those are the people who doubt. Let me ask you a question. On a scale of one to ten, yeah. I, I don't know. You you tell me and everyone else. On a scale of one to ten, how humble would you rate yourself? Ten being very humble, one not very humble at all. Ten being very humble, uh, I would probably rate myself like. I mean, I don't know. I I all I we all struggle with pride, so I'm not gonna even name a number. Because we all struggle with it, all of us. It's the number one sin humans struggle with. But you know, I yeah. Because if I've you said if, if you would have said ten, you're not very humble. But do you do, yeah. you do you consider yourself to have at least some humility? Yes, I do. Okay, cool, yes. cool, cool. Uh, you 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 look pretty young. How how old yeah. are you? Um, how old are you? I'm twenty. I'm um, twenty three. Okay, so. Let's go over what you just said. You said it's in your experience. 23 years worth of experience. How long have you been a Christian? Uh, five years. Ago, saved, uh, five long. years. Is it possible that your your experience with other believers is a small amount? I would say no, because I've, like, since I became a Christian, I've mm -hmm. been, like, pretty hardcore. Even when I'm backsliding, like, at times, I've been hardcore about talking to people about this stuff. So yeah, I've but, talked to a lot of people, a lot of people. Yeah, and I, and I, and I get that. When you say, but when we say things like a lot of people, that can be subjective, right? Uh, somebody, I spoke to a lot of people, but it was five people. Someone spoke to a lot of people and it was a million people. You would have to agree. You'd have to concede that being young and only being safe for such a short amount of time also, which by the way, I'm glad that you, at your young age, you are a believer since most, most young folks aren't. So that, so that's a feather in your cap, but you have to agree that your, your experience 
isn't vast. And so what I and what I'm trying to get you to understand is that um, as long as I've been talking with people and dealing with people, um, in my 30 plus year, 30 something years of being a believer, the very first time that I got out and started witnessing and sharing the gospel, 1991. What were you doing? Uh I was not much in you? my dad's right. in my yeah. dad's uh testicles. Now, so at that point in time, I've come across a lot of people who just wondered, who worried. And it wasn't because of sin, it might have been for other other reasons. It might be because of past things that they've done, right? It might be because mm-hmm. they don't feel on fire. They don't understand the word enough. It, it's a lot of different reasons, right? What you can't do is get into their mind and say, this is why all, no, listen, there are a lot of people who doubt their salvation. Now we want to comfort them. I don't want folks doubting their salvation. And so when someone says, Hey, is there a way that I can know? I always say, there's no way. Definitely. There's only two people that's going to know two people that can analyze this perfectly. One God, obviously he knows if you are, you're not. And then two, you, you know what it is that you do, what you don't do. Now, my statement to them is, do you we all sin. Now, tell me if you disagree with anything that I'm saying. We all sin. When you sin, does your sin bother you? Are you okay with it? If you're cool with your sin, I don't mind. Listen, I don't mind fornicating. I don't mind lying. I don't mind stealing. I don't mind cheating. I don't mind looking at sin either. Doesn't bother me at all. Here's the thing. Here's the thing, though. Mm-hmm. Unbelievers feel guilt for their sins. But we're not talking about unbelievers. But, but, but listen, I'm you're just right. saying like. But you're saying like that's an example of somebody being a true believer, but unbelievers feel bad for their sins. Muslims feel bad for their sins. Catholics feel bad for their sins. Mm-hmm. So how can that be an evidence of somebody being saved? You I didn't say, saying? listen, I'm, I, listen, I'm not saying it's the be all to end all. What I'm saying is if a person can sin with impunity, Paul brings this up in Romans seven, the difference with him versus first, first John three, nine the person that's practicing sinning, that person isn't saved. But Paul, Paul even uses the word to practice. But Paul lets us get, peels back the onions, opens up the curtains, lets us see behind the curtains, and lets us see that he's talking about his desire. His desire is not to do those things. If a person desires to sin, if they desire to practice sin, but they have made a public pro- a profession about their faith, we might have a problem here. We might have a problem well, here, and so here would be my response. Is, huh? Are you are you finished, or you have? Go ahead. Go ahead. Someone else to say? No. Go ahead. Go ahead. We can, okay. we can go back and forth. Yeah. So, personally, I, I'm not gonna like get into this debate right now on uh, KJV only, but I believe the KJV is the pure Word of God. It's the only perfect version of the Word of God. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not gonna go into that, but I'm just gonna say that in that First uh, John three verse. Mm-hmm. It's, it says, he that committeth sin, which means one sin. Okay, so let's go to it. The then. way I interpret that verse, I interpret that verse as being the new man versus the old man. Paul constantly exhorts us to walk in the new man, put off the old man. Walk in the spirit so you don't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Okay. So, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. So, yeah, I, I just... I don't think that um, the guilt for your sins or sorrow for your sins is an evidence of being saved because when a Catholic or a Muslim, they feel bad for their sins. I, when I before I was saved, I felt bad for my sins. I would do things and I would like feel remorse. It's not an evidence that somebody's saved. Okay, now I want to share. I want to share something. This is why that what you just said didn't didn't really matter about the King James version and so forth about First John three nine. Let me put it on the screen. Tell me if you can see this. In First John three nine, what I have is the Texas Receptus, and I have the the uh, the NA twenty eight. The word for practice is the Greek word poie. If you notice, it's the exact same word. Okay, so poie is the person that's doing the sin. Okay, now if we go to Romans 8, I'm sorry, Romans 7, uh, if I can type it in correctly, Romans 7 and 18, Paul says, for I, for I know that nothing good dwells in me that is in my flesh, for the willing, and the word for willing is thelane, 
the exact same word in the Texas Receptus as well as in the NA28. And so Paul's point is, whether you, use it, whether you use the NASB, ESV, or King James Version, it's literally the exact same Greek words we're talking about. And so Paul is saying it's the desire. The person that desires to do wrong, that's the person that he's speaking of in 1 John 3, 9. I mean, yeah, 3, 9. If, if your desire is to still live how you want to live, if there is no change, I can't tell you if there's a change in you. I don't know if it, I can look and see and make a guess. But ultimately, I don't know. All I might just see is you on your bad day, seeing Peter the day after he he uh, denied Christ. Well, clearly, Peter was one of his. So I but if I were to make a judgment, oh, man, Peter, he ain't saved. But we know better now. So I so ultimately, my judgment doesn't matter. All, that's why I said it, it's it's between you and God. Only, you know, and there are going to be people, according to Jesus, who will say, Lord, all these different things. They They really thought. He says, I never knew you. So it's possible to think you are and not be. Paul is literally Definitely. telling them to examine and himself to see if they have yes. Christ. And so a and person let me has, bring that verse up to you. I'm sorry. What were you going to say? I said, so a person has a person that has Christ. They are literally changed on the inside. And what does God, what does God say is going to happen or occur with a person that has the spirit in them? He says, God says he will cause them to walk in his teachings, in his statutes. So God says they are going to do something. Now, how much? There's no way to know. There's no, I, I can't compare your fruit with my fruit, your works with my work. I can't. But James well, is literally saying, hey, you might want to check out you, not me. I can't check out your works, but you check out your works. I'm not called to check out your works. You're not called to check out mine, yeah, but you are called yeah, to check out your you own works. You are definitely. Would you say that the Holy Spirit? What's that? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Would you say that the Holy Spirit forces you to do anything? Because once you believe in Jesus Christ, you're sealed with the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. to the day of redemption. Once saved, always saved. But do you believe that that Holy Spirit that He forces you to do anything, or is everything a choice? It, it, it it's really both. You do you do have to, he he has he is not taking away your volition. He is not taking away your will, okay? But he, but he is working in you now. To some, to some people, more so than others. Some people are going to get a greater push from God than others because, yeah, we've got a will, but so too does God. And he, the word that's used in Ezekiel is clear that He is going to cause us. Now, the things that He pushes us to do. Now, how it works, He didn't tell us exactly how it works because it's clear that we can disobey and still quench the Holy Spirit. But the closer we get to him, the more we're in him, the more we're going to look like him and actually obey him. There are some times where we don't obey him. Sometimes, you know what? I messed that up. Today, Monday, Friday, Thursday, I look nothing like a Christian. I look nothing like, matter of fact, Friday, I look like my old self. Or on the 15th, I look like everybody's old self. That happens. Yeah, yeah. And so what God does is, I, and I've seen this, uh, at least in my experience, I've seen, and, and scripturally, I've seen him take people who are struggling, who who one day they're up, tomorrow they're down. Next day they're up, next day they're down. I've seen him take those people who are struggling with whatever that, that issue is and other people seeing that and say, okay, good. If he can do it, I can do it too. He's showing me how to grow with my with my addiction. I'm struggling with porn. He's showing me how I can grow because this guy is struggling with porn and he's growing in Christ. This guy has an anger issue. He's struggling, but he's showing me. I, I have an anger issue too. So he's showing me. This guy has a lust issue. So we're not we're not going to be perfect. And so we're never going to say that these works show us. And if anyone is trying to be saved by their works, like Paul says in Galatians 5, that person's cut off. But the person who recognizes I can't, I can't be saved by my works. The more I try, the more I work at being good, the more I show myself how foolish and weak I am. However, if I'm yes. new, if any and, and any anyone with a uh, with a spouse or a loved one, their child, you are the love, the Bible says Paul says the love of Christ compels us, moves us to share him. His the fear of him and the love. And so there's a pushing in us. How much how it works? He hadn't told us. All we know is but that. But there's some people. 
who do resist the Holy Ghost, who never listen. There's people who get saved, and then they just walk in the flesh the rest of their lives. God punishes them for it on earth because he punishes his children on earth, and they get no rewards in heaven. But well, since you since you brought up Matthew seven twenty one to twenty three, I just want to uh, and this is related to the other conversation about false converts. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to like show you this right here in verse okay. twenty two. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me ye that work iniquity. These are the false converts. These are the people who thought they were Christians, but they weren't. What was the reason why? They were trusting in their works. Have we not prophesied in well, their well, name? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Why do you say they were, they, they were false converts because they were trusting in their works? Because when they stood before Christ on Judgment Day, mm -hmm. they used their works as evidence. This is what the Calvinists say that your works are your evidence of your salvation. And th this is a perfect example of people using evidence as their salvation. And Jesus says, I never knew you, depart from me, ye that work iniquity, because everybody's a worker of iniquity. And, you know, like only people who are children of God are not workers of iniquity. Well, hold on, hold on. What we got, what we, what we have to do then is we can't say the reason why we can't say that they weren't saved uh, because they trusted in their works is because that's not what the Bible says. We got to go what Jesus says. Let's put it on the screen. Jesus says it does reason, say though, but it does say. It. Well, it says then, and then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Why? Why weren't they saved? He says I never knew you. It wasn't the the lawless practicing yeah. that they were doing. Because they also, yes. because because guess what? It also he also verifies that they did some good things too. It's not the work that mm -hmm. took them away, it, and we and we couldn't say that they were trusting in their works. They thought that the works yeah. meant something, but what was Jesus' they, ultimate response? I never knew you. So, and if you go before that, he says, "But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven." The real reason they didn't enter. Is yeah because he never knew him, but they didn't do the will of, of the Father which is in heaven. And Matt, uh, John six forty reads. Well, hold on. This Wait a is second. the will. Well, we got a problem now. We have we have we have a, we got a flag on the field. We got a problem. The very same word, the very same word that's used for practicing lawless, not in this passage, but in in First John. Point A is this very same word, the very same word that Jesus uses of them in 721. Look what it says. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, mm -hmm. Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. So not everybody who says, Lord, not everyone that calls him a Christian is, uh, will yeah. enter. But, so who will? But he who does, and the word for does is the word for making or doing, is the word poi, or the, mm -hmm. or the doing one. The one that's doing the yep. will of my Father who is in heaven. So, so are we saying that they have to do something also? Are, are we are we saying that those that get in are those that are doing something? What is the doing that they have to do? It's John 6, 40. Jesus told us what the will of the Father was right here. Mm -hmm. it, it reads in John 6, 40. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. So the will of the Father is for us to believe in Jesus Christ and be have everlasting life. Thank you. So you just so you night. just nullified your point. The one that is believing, Jesus says, "I never knew you." So if you believe, if, yeah. if that's what you're doing, if you're believing, then you are saved. They weren't unsaved, or they weren't saved, or not saved because they were trusting in works. No, they may have been trusting works, but his point is, they never believed. They never knew him. That's Jesus' point. If what? you know, so if I know you, if I know Jesus, and I still think that I, I there is some, there's some works I gotta do, and I might be confused. I knew people that believe that I'm saved, but I gotta, I gotta tarry for the Holy Spirit. I gotta go speak in tongues. I gotta this. They were confused, 
but they were certainly saved. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, they were torn because they were taught wrong. You can be taught wrong and go to heaven. You can get it wrong and go to yeah. heaven as long yeah. as you get the main thing right. That is, you place your faith in thing. Christ. Huh? Yes. But I, what I would argue is that people who have always believed in work salvation, they're not believers. They're not children of God. They haven't believed in Jesus. How do you know? And because they haven't believed in his promise. If you believe in Jesus Christ, you believe that you receive eternal life because he died for your sins. They haven't believed that promise. They think, oh, I need to repent of my sins or prove that I'm saved by doing these works or any type of work, surrender, obedience. I need to do this. They're not believing in Jesus. They're believing in their works, and they they were never believers. What what what, what what caused you what caused you to get saved? What caused me to get saved? Well, mm -hmm. my testimony uh, very very short. Uh, basically, I was like just researching different truths about the world and seeking the truth, and I came across some guy who kept talking about Jesus. So I. Picked up uh, one of the books that only have the four Gospels in them, and I just started reading all four Gospels, and I was just like, wow, this is the truth. Like, Jesus really is the Son of God. I believe in him. Like, that's how I got saved. Do you, do you think reading. the Lord was at work in your heart? What, what, what yeah, role? he was at work. Okay. So, the Lord, so is, is he ultimately responsible for your belief? Is he ultimate? No, he's not. He's not responsible for your belief? He's He drew me to him, but it was a choice. It was a choice. Okay, but was There's it... There's people it, who reject... Was it his choice to draw you after you you chose, or did he choose you first? Who chose who first? Choice. Him or you? Well, the Bible says that uh, all men will be draw, drawn to him. So God draws all men. No, but some no. some choose through... Okay. You who, but you came to Christ, or you placed your faith in Christ. Who drew who first? Did you draw yourself to Him, and then He chose you, or did He do the choosing first, and then you chose? In other words, what changed your heart to, to make you decide to place your faith in Christ? Well, God drew me to Him, but he, the Bible says God draws all men. Okay, I, I, I won't go over that particular passage because I because we'll be here forever. Um, the, it is it. it the drawing of all men, if I be lifted up, then I'll draw all. And, and it's not all in terms of everybody, but it's, it's literally the all manner of men, which he's speaking of. But it's clear that the very first thing that has to happen before you place your faith in Christ is that he's got He's going to do a work in your heart in order for you to keep believing. Yeah. But you believed the Lord was at work. This other person believed the Lord was at work, but he just so happened to be around the wrong teacher. A teacher that he placed his faith in Christ, knew what the Lord did, and then he joined a church. Follow me. Just like yep. you, you place your faith in Christ. You're looking for a church yes. home. You go to a church, and this church teaches that you have to keep working to stay safe. Yeah, he's still okay. saved. Okay, so you place your faith yeah. in Christ. You're believing. You're saved. How long are you saved? Forever. But then you go to a church because it's your first day being saved, your third day being saved, and you go to a church. They seem like good people, but they're teaching that you have to work to be saved, and you believe it. Are you are you now unsaved? No, nope, you're still saved. You you're just saved nullified course. your entire argument. Because how, how is that? How was that nullifying it? Because you just said you're saved. You got saved on Monday. Sunday, you go your, your first day being saved. You go to a church that teaches that you have to keep working to stay saved. You believe them. Mm -hmm. Monday, you were saved. Sunday, are you unsaved? No. Even though you're at a church that that's teaching flawed, teaching a flawed doctrine. You're no longer yeah, unsaved. So how, how does that, how does that nullify? Because you said that anyone that believes that they're, they're of the devil. They have, they, they believe the false gospel. They can't be saved. No, you, no, you, no. You literally don't, just said that. I don't want, I don't want you to, uh, like misunderstand me like okay there's tons of christians who are genuine believers who have gotten deceived by these false teachers and they're still saved and god's chastising him trying to bring them back to the truth 
And, like, you know, I think you might be one of them, too. Like, I, I honestly don't think that you've crossed that line where you're a false prophet. I don't think that. You you're, put you're horns in my head, though, so it looked like it. <laughs> yeah, I, the reason, look, the only reason I put horns on your head is because when somebody's preaching a false gospel, mm-hmm. I want to make it very clear how serious this is. Like, it's not just, oh, he's a little bit mixed up, but you you should still listen to him. I want to make it very clear that this is heaven or hell, because I really do care about people's souls well, going can to I, heaven. Can I and, let, let, let me give you some, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me just give some, some, some big brotherly wisdom. If I, if I could, it might not be wise, but it, it might be though. Uh, and then I, I got, I got to go ahead and let you go. Uh, but I, listen, and I, and by the way, I appreciate you coming on. I, re, I really do. Uh, a lot of folks wouldn't do it, but let me just give you, let me just give you this. Assume that you've got a lot more to learn. I do. I know I do. Yeah, I definitely do. Yeah. And so because of that, because of your young age, also, the the relatively short amount of time that you've been saved, don't go so far to condemn the other person to hell because they don't believe or see it just like you, or or even if you're mm-hmm. right because they haven't gotten to your level yet. Assume that there is going to be some grace that God is still working in. And remember, you and I aren't the aren't the Holy Spirit. We're not working in that person. That person can go around the world ten times and finally get it right. A lot of us have seen the brother Young Don. He's gone from here to here to here to here. And, and who knows where he's going to end up at. Uh, and I yeah, said, yeah. I said, listen, we're going to leave him alone because he's he, he's stopping off at every bus stop. And who knows the Lord is going to eventually move him along. He's only been saved less than a year. So what is God going to mm-hmm. do in him? Imagine if he's really yeah. yearning to grow in the Lord, and I think he is, then what's going to happen to him in five years, in 10 years, in 20 years? He's not going to yeah. be the same person that he was in 2023. The same thing for you. In 2030, you you won't be called. I promise you, you probably won't be called Fuego Savvy. You'll go by your real name, and you'll be and, and you'll be a different person. You are going to grow in wisdom and intelligence the further you grow, as well as spiritually. And so, I would say, don't be too dogmatic. Don't be too too quick to cast someone out and 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 put the horns on them, call them a false teacher. Mm-hmm. What you want to do? What you want to do is make sure that people know that if you place your faith in Christ, then you are saved. If you don't do all the works that you want to do, like Paul says, I keep messing up. I keep sinning. What was Paul's focus in Romans 7? His works. I mess, but my desire is different, indicating my heart is. what does, And the Bible tells us how we should behave. And so what we want to do? Whether we're free grace, lordship, salvation, dispensational Calvinists, what have you, what we want to do is be just like the picture of the Christian in the Bible. And if a person isn't, if they think different, they think wrong, you know what? Let me see if I can talk with that person. Let me go see if I can change or let me see if I might be wrong. But you don't want to get in the habit of castigating this person so much so that you condemn them to hell. And like I said, in using the analogy that I, that I did with you, that person can still be saved. So what is happening is other folks see your video. And you said that person's going to hell. They agree. I didn't say you're going to hell. I didn't say No, 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 no. no. What, what, what I'm saying is, if you say it's a, it's a damnable doctrine, well, what does damnable mean? Yeah. Damnable means they are damned to hell. And so somebody else, if, see, you go this far with it. Somebody else will come and take it the next distance. Uh, someone like, let's say, a, a, a Leighton Flowers. Love them to death. But if he teaches uh, all everything that's wrong with Calvinism, the next person that watches the video is going to come with come with the conclusion that Calvinism Calvinists are all devils; they're going to hell. Right? He may not mean that; he doesn't intend for it to go that way. But other folks that are listening to him are going to take it to that next level. So I'm saying to you, now you might be right, but make sure you have as much grace and mercy in what you're saying, and that you first investigate it. That we've had the conversation. If you and I had this conversation, would you put the horns on my head, Ben? Uh, yeah, if you still, this is why I wanted to get to, like, before we go, I just wanted to get to this to see if I still would have put the horns on your head. Okay. So the back, the backloaded work salvation gospel, this is the greatest threat to the body of Christ today because people are saying, yes, you're saved by grace, it's all grace alone. And then you will have good works. You will. 
If you don't, it's just proof that you're not saved. It's evidence that you're not saved. But I didn't so say if that. you don't have, if I'm well in the clip, but I'm just gonna finish my point. Is what people mm-hmm. are saying is that that if you don't have the works as evidence, some change life, some obedience, some turn sorrow for your sins. These are all works, mm-hmm. and that makes it a requirement to be saved. That adds that to the gospel. The gospel is the good news, and the backloaded work salvation gospel is what creates false converts. It's what makes people doubt your salvation. It leads people to hell because it is a false, accursed gospel. And it really is something extremely serious. Mm-hmm. And listen, bro, like I like you a lot as a person. I, Out of all the people I've exposed on my channel, I personally like you the most. Did I've, you, I've been did, a fan of Did you really of expose me? Yeah, yeah, I did. I okay, did expose l- you. L- l- listen to this. Listen to this. Listen to this. This is what I wanted you to listen to the, uh, the first time. Listen to this. Here it is. Let me back it up. Okay. Are not important is someone that is too excited about just giving a simple mental assent and have not studied the scriptures. Now, if anyone tells you that your salvation is based on your works, also is a person who has put too much emphasis on themselves and not given enough attention to the scriptures. You must have faith. If you never show an ounce of work, uh, but you have legitimate faith, legitimate faith, then you are saved. The question. Did you hear that? Yeah, I did hear that. Do you, do, do you agree with that? that. But do you agree with that? I do agree with that, but my response to that will be that I've heard like some of the worst heretics alive say good things like that, like really good things, 100% true. Like I've heard Paul Washer even say stuff that's completely true. But then in another breath, he'll say something different. So, okay, so I I don't know if if that's what you consistently say or I, I haven't I haven't I haven't changed my 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 opinion. I said, listen, faith is the most important thing. Do I believe works are important? Sure. Do works do works prove your salvation? No, they don't. Do you want to okay. have works? Yes, you do. Why? Because the Bible literally tells us we are we are here to to do some works. We are His hands. Yeah, we, we absolutely should. Okay. We should. So when you so so my point is my point is dismiss with the horns and you keep the horns on me but off other people just if you disagree this is why I disagree or give a caution anyone mm-hmm. that is a Christian and doesn't want to do works well then what what's happening with you what's what's going on with you maybe you are saved. could be a slothful maybe, slothful Christian listen in maybe, the flesh one one of three things. You're the greatest Christian ever. You're not a very good Christian or you're not a Christian. So those are only three options. You're a great Christian still. You're not a very good Christian or you're not a Christian. One of those three things. Now, I don't know, but my point is investigate thoroughly. Make sure that you understand the person's argument because if you're still putting hand, horns on my head and saying that I'm teaching a works-based salvation, no, I'm teaching a salvation-based works. I'm teaching a faith-based works, not a works-based faith, faith that will move well, my works. If you don't show works but, ever, listen, if you don't show works ever, you can still be saved. That's not what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. I'm saying, listen, you know the problem with the world is? Like Jesus said, let your light so shine that men will see your faith. No, that men will see your good works and then glorify God. The problem is us as believers, yeah, should. us as believers don't show works like we're supposed to. We what should, good does yeah. it do to be saved, keep it to yourself, and go to heaven while everyone goes to hell? You are, un, not you, but anyone else, if anyone feels that way, you are an unloving person. You cannot say you love the Lord, according to Jesus, in, in 1 John, you cannot say you love the Lord and not love your brother. If you don't love him, you don't, if you don't love the, your brother, you don't love him. If you don't love him, then you're not saved. What's an indication of salvation? But love for that other get- person. Do we and get call, saved listen, by, did, did John three sixteen say, uh, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever loveth him will not perish, but have everlasting life. How do you we know you love him? That's the faith. point. Okay. Listen, it all faith. goes together. You must believe. How do you know you believe? How do you know you're his? He literally tells you in first John, listen, it's not like that. This don't go with that. It, they, they go together. 
How do you know you now? You think that people don't know that they believe. You think that everyone should everyone knows if they believe or not. I'm telling you, in my 51 years, 30 something years in ministry and seeing people, I've seen people who, who who doubted their own salvation. The book of Hebrews is a book to Christians, Jewish Christians who were doubting, and he's trying to comfort them. Jesus himself, Jesus himself says to the disciples who were doubting, Peter. John, uh, Bartholomew, Thaddeus, they were doubting. What does Jesus say? He says, don't lose heart. He says, I'm going to prepare a place for you and I'm coming back. Why? Because they were doubting. He wants them to, to not doubt, to be of good cheer. So the point is this. There are going to come a point in time when you do doubt. People do doubt. Legitimate Christians do doubt. And they wonder, am, am I really saved? John the Baptist had a moment of doubt. Are you really? Are, are you the one? Well, doggone it, John. What did you see? Matter of fact, y'all go and tell John what, what you all have seen too. So people are going to have these moments of doubt. You and I will at some point in time. Am I really saved? Did I just say some words? Was it just I was there in the crowd and I felt good about it? So what do I do? I want to know. And so all throughout the Bible, if you don't, if you didn't understand his point in John 3, 16, if you didn't understand his point in Matthew 7, if you didn't understand his point in 1 Corinthians, then maybe you'll understand it in Ephesians. Maybe you'll understand it in Philippians. Maybe you'll understand it in 1 John. He gives it to us so many different ways. Ultimately, if you love him, he says you, you have to love them. He, he literally says, if you don't love them, then you don't love me. And if you don't love them, mm -hmm. if you don't love him, are you saved? No. So the point is, well, this. you don't get saved by love, though. There's no verse in the Bible that says that you're saved by loving people or by loving God. Because Jesus said that fulfills the works of the law. Love is the works of the law. We're not saved by the works of the law. And and the reason why I made the video on you is because you said uh, you said how do we verify that we're His, meaning we're saved? You said. By how we live, how we live is works of the law. Because if you don't steal, you're not a thief. You're living that life, that work of the law. You know, it goes with everything in life. Can I ask and a question? you said, "What's that? Is it possible? So if you don't, if you don't love the Lord, are you saved? There's people who can get saved and then uh, lose love for the Lord. Yeah." Here's what he says. First John 4, 7, beloved, let us love one another for love is from God. And everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. The one who does not love does not know God for God is love. You cannot then come back and say that you that you, if a person doesn't love God, then they can still be saved. No, that very same person, that, implicit in believing is loving God. You're, that this, verse says that person does, does not know God. It's talking... First John is a book about our fellowship with God. It's about our fellowship, our relationship. Calvinists and other false teachers will take First John and they will use it as a uh, test to see if you're saved by your works. See, That's not what it's okay, about. Hold on. See, what, it's what about you're doing do you is, know God. You don't. You don't like Calvinists, and so they're false teachers. If they place their faith in Christ, are well, they? Are they? Are they saved? If if they uh, repent of their believing in perseverance of the saints, then yeah. So you're so, saved. so oh, see here's 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 the problem. Here's the problem. You and this is this is this is what I want you to do. You, you take it if you take it or not. You're gonna have to grow up a little bit and stop condemning folks who don't believe what you believe. If a person places their faith in Christ, they're saved. Now you just said if they also believe though in perseverance of the saints, well then they're not saved. You keep well, think about your arguments this. all through this, uh, uh, brother, that, and, that, and that it, that's a problem. That is. A I want problem. you to think about this, though. I want you to think about this. Okay. Who was the greatest threat to Jesus Christ's ministry? It was the Pharisees. No. They were the worst no. salvation. No, 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 no. The, can I tell you who was the greatest threat to his, to his ministry? Nobody. Who? Nobody. Nobody. I mean the greatest, and not a threat, an enemy. Uh, my bad on that. But the greatest enemy to his ministry was the Pharisees. All, all, Who's the no, greatest? All of, us. all of us. All of us were his. No, I enemy. mean the people, the people who came against him the hardest, who who tried to stop him at every turn. It was the Pharisees. 
the work salvationist. When Paul's ministry started, who was the greatest threat to Paul? The Judaizers, the work salvationists. Okay. This is, I'm telling you, bro, this is the greatest threat to the church today. And it's creeping in. It's exponentially growing. So it's it's what, getting what, out of what, control. What, what is the great? What is the see? With all due respect, in your five years of being saved in twenty three, you don't know that. But what did Jesus say that you must do? Love the Lord with all your heart. Love the. If you do not love Him, you're going to hell. You saying no, you believe in Him no. that mean that doesn't mean anything. But you better love Him. That's you works of the law, though. Huh? That's that's works of the law. All right. All right. Listen. Right. Let me let me do this, bro. I'm gonna go ahead and let you go because I've, I've got to go ahead and, and get out of here. I appreciate you coming okay. on, my friend. Um, we can we can still stay in touch. You got my email, um, brother. Stay stay blessed, uh, guys. The problem is, and listen, and listen. He's young. He he is young, which is fine, which is fine. He's going he's going to grow. But if anyone tells you that you don't have to love the Lord when He says you have to love Him, you have to love Him. As a matter of fact, he tells us, he tells us the ver one of the first things he says, love the Lord with all your heart, your mind, body. So if you don't love him, you're not his. You don't know him. He went to Matthew seven and says, Jesus says, I never knew you, never knew you. First John says that if you don't love him, you don't know him. He doesn't know you.